Hello everybody, welcome back to my RC Plane channel. I'm James, continuing on with this Balsa USA smoothie build. In fact, this video I'm going to be doing the final assembly of the plane kit. So what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to put everything in the plane, get it completely assembled, and I'm going to check its balance, I'm going to check its weight, and I'm also just going to do a quick check of the wing loading. Okay, so to start with, I have a bunch of stuff kind of sitting out here on this little workbench that I wanted to show you. So I'm going to put, be putting on, this is a, this is a um, Great Plains 2 and 3 quarter inch aluminum spinner. Now, I think Great Plains is out of business now, so I'm not sure if you can actually get this spinner anymore, but there's other manufacturers that make aluminum spinners. I'm going to be also using this Master Air Screw. This is an 11.5 prop, and I'm not, I don't think I'm actually going to be using this one when I do the maiden flight, but I'm just going to use this just to, for the final assembly to have something on the front end so that I have that to represent the prop, to have that weight that I need for that. And then what else do I have? So I have, this is my Batteries America. This is a five cell and this is a 2700 um, milliamps nickel metal hydride battery. I actually have a four cell that I can use also if this is too heavy, but I like this battery. And then I have, of course I have the, the, the receiver and then the switch and what I'm going to do is I'm not going to hook up all the electronics now I'm just going to pack things in where I think they need to be and then I'll check the balance and if, if, and if everything balances out correctly then I'll go ahead and get everything kind of packed in the way it needs to be and then over here I have this is just a simple scale handheld scale and I think this is you can buy these are these are pretty common you can get these pretty easily like off Amazon and this is for like luggage or for fishing things like that it's not it's pretty inexpensive and it's pretty pretty useful all right one other thing I wanted to show you is that I have these two little extensions and these are going to be for the ailerons so what I'm going to do is I'm going to plug these into my number one and my number six channel and those are just so these are going to be kind of hanging out once I get the receiver is going to be packed in foam and such. So I'm not going to it's not going to be accessible. So these are going to be hanging out so that I can attach um, when I put the wing on, I can attach the ailerons. So I'll have these. And what I'm going to do is I like to mark just to keep things um, organized and make me make sure I plug things in the right spot. I like to mark. I use something like this is heat, heat shrink tubing for electronics. And I'll put a little piece of this around one of these, and then I'll put another piece of, of it around the corresponding um, wire in the wing. That way I don't get kind of screwed up when I'm out in the field. I just plug yellow into yellow and black into black. And again, the other thing is that I have this little, this is a Traxxas switch. And then once I, once I confirm that my balance is okay, I will go ahead and install this. And I'm going to install it on the other side of the plane. This is the muffler side. I'm going to install the switch on the opposite side because that way it just helps prevent or kind of minimize oil and residue sort of getting on the switch. If I put it over here, I, I wouldn't, you can get it. If you, you put it on this side, obviously you can get stuff coming off the muffler and, and oil and junk and that would get in the switch. I don't want that to happen. So I'm going to put it over here on this side.
All right, so I have the plans here. Let's go ahead and check where the center of balance or the balance of the plane is located. And it's right here. Here's the profile of the wing. And it's right here along the main wing spars. You can kind of see it by that symbol right there. Sometimes it's referred to the center of gravity. Um, I like just calling it the center of balance. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and mark this on the top of the wing. So this is a, a low wing airplane. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to flip it over and check the balance that way. So I'm going to be balancing it from basically upside down. And the reason I'm going to do that is because the weight of the plane is kind of above the wing. And if I was going to try to do it from the bottom of the wing, what would happen is like, you could still do it that way. It's just that it gets a little more squirrely because the weight's sort of on top. This way, when I flip it over, the weight will sort of be hanging down. Now, if I was doing a high wing airplane like the Piper Cub or something, I would go ahead and I would do it from the bottom of the wing. And of course the mass of the, of the plane, the fuselage is, is hanging below the wing. So again, it's more stable that way when you're trying to do your, try to find your balance. So anyhow, that's what I'm gonna do. Let me go ahead and mark this. Let me find somewhere on the wing here. Let me put my plans down. Okay, so here's my, you may not be able to see it, but I can kind of feel that it's like right, right there. So I'm just gonna mark it with my Sharpie. right about here. Okay, and I'll go ahead and I'll mark the other side. And remember with the Sharpie, you can just take it off probably with alcohol or acetone. All right, so hopefully I will be pretty close. If it falls within about a half inch, um, either forward or back, um, I'll, I'll be okay with that. But I hope I can get it close. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just sort of do it the old fashioned way. I'm gonna flip the plane over and I'm gonna to try to hold it with my fingers. I'm gonna to try to balance it on those two dots and see kind of how it, how it works. Okay, I'll see if I can get this on here. So I put my finger, so here's the dot that I marked right here. And I'll do the same thing on this other side. I'm just gonna look for it, it's right there. And I can feel it right now that it's nose heavy. In fact, it's really, you can kind of see, it's hard to get it. Definitely is nose heavy. Probably that big old 46 on there, but this plane actually it goes up to a 50 in terms of it's uh, to the two to the two stroke. It's it says up to a 50, so this is a 46, but it is pretty heavy. I do have that heavy battery up in the front, but let me see if I can. Yeah, it seems it seems to me that I got about an inch. My center of balance is about an inch or so, maybe a little more than an inch forward than it should be. So I'm gonna have to make some adjustments here. Okay, so as I mentioned, my center of gravity or my center of balance is a, is a forward by about an inch or so. That's, that's pretty far. So I'm gonna have to go ahead and play around with the innards and see if I can kind of get things in the right location and move some stuff back. Okay, well I pulled out one of my homemade plane stands made out of PVC parts. And in the past, I cut a couple of pieces of soft rubber tubing that I just taped on top of this. So I can use this as actually sort of a balancing machine. So not too fancy, but it works great. So I'm gonna put the plane on here now, and then I'm gonna show you what I did. I worked out sort of where I think things need to be in order for it to balance. But let me go ahead and get the plane on here and then we'll go from there. Okay, so I have the plane now set up on my balancer here. And it's kind of hard to see from the angle, but I basically have it lined up right where my dot is on both sides. Let me go around here. may not be perfect, perfect, but I'll check it. I just wanted to kind of show you how it's working. So it's on, it's basically now it's all set up kind of where it needs to be. Now I have the plane and you notice it's balancing. 
Well, the reason I got it to balance, or let me show you this, let me get up here, is because my battery, I had to move my battery way back to this spot in order for the plane to balance. Now, that's not good because I really can't put my battery that far back. There actually is a compartment that goes about to right here that's open that I can access through, um, through the, there's a bulkhead that's open there, but I can't simply, I simply just can't put my battery that far back. And if I could, I wouldn't want to do it anyhow because I wouldn't be able to get to it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add some weights. I'm going to move the battery up. Now I can put it like right under here. And that's what I'm going to do, but I'm going to have to put some weights back down inside here. So let me show you what I did for that. Okay, so now what I want to do, obviously, is I want to move my battery up into this compartment. I can put it right here and I'll have access to it. And what I'm going to do is, what I did today is I went to my local sporting goods shop and I bought some lead sinkers for fishing. I bought a bunch of different sizes. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to balance it out by moving the battery this way and adding some sinkers back into that compartment. Now here's sort of the good thing. This plane, the specs on this plane call for it to be, or basically specs out at five to five and a half pounds. Now what I did already is I weighed the plane with the battery and I, and I did that off camera. And I'll, and I'll weigh it again to show you this later. And it comes in just above five pounds. It comes in at 5.08 ounces, or I mean 5.08 pounds. That means I have about a half a pound to work with, which is about eight ounces. I don't want to add eight ounces if I don't have to. I don't want to make the plane heavier than, I, than, I, than it needs to be. But I am going to have to do something. So I've got these different sizes. And now I'm going to go ahead and I'll see if I can kind of demonstrate what I, I'm hoping to achieve here. Is I'll bring my battery up to where I want it to be, which is going to be right about in there. And then I'm going to put my sinker or my lead weights back here. And let's see here. I'm not gonna, I don't have these out of the package obviously, so I'm just gonna use one and I'm just gonna put it back here a little further. Let's go a little back. Okay. Something like that right there. A little bit more. Okay. So that's gonna be the way I do it. And these two in here are about three ounces. And then I think I'm gonna have to kind of bring it because I think there's a bulkhead back in here so I can't go that far back. So they're gonna have to come up here. So I'm gonna have to put a couple more like right in here. And that's gonna be the way I do it. So that's gonna be, that'll put me probably about um, somewhere around fifth, like, like five pounds, like five and a quarter pounds or something like that, which would be right sort of back like in the middle range of the specs. So I'm okay with that. Okay, so let me go ahead and take all this off and we'll start putting these in where they need to be. So for this though, for the battery, I did wanted to mention, I'm gonna build a little kind of cradle for it or a tray for it using this extruded foam insulation material. I've mentioned this before and I like this stuff a lot. It's stiff, it's strong, and it's super light. So I'm gonna build basically a battery tray that I can Put the battery in and hold it in place right in this spot right back in here and then what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna drop some weights i'm gonna put some five minute epoxy on them and kind of kind of dip them in five minute epoxy if you will i'm going to drop them back down into here and we'll let them just kind of catch and then let them cure up and that's kind of how it's going to work
Okay, well, as you saw, I took those lead weights and I hit them with a hammer and flattened them out and I made the surface a little bit irregular on them. And then I coated them in the five minute epoxy and I dropped them into the fuselage. And what they did is, the reason I did that is I wanted them to have like a flat surface so that I can get them up against the side of the fuselage or hopefully the bottom of the fuselage. And it would give them a bigger sort of a st sticking area. And I can think I, I think I may be able to show them to you. It's kind of hard to see. And let me get my flashlight down inside there. You'll see them down inside here, maybe. Let me see here. I'm going to zoom in. There they are back in there. So hopefully you can kind of see them back in there. And then what I did is I took a I took a skewer, oops, like a barbecue skewer, and I used that just so I can kind of place them where I wanted down inside there. It was a little difficult, but they're in there now. And I think they'll be okay. I think they're going to stick pretty well with that five minute epoxy. And I put just enough weight in there, hopefully that, that this will now balance out when I put the battery right back in here.
All right, so my foam battery tray I made is now glued in. It's nice and secure. And what you'll notice is I actually cut out this kind of section of it a little bit. And kind of looking inside like that, it's kind of kind of ugly, but it works works fine. And what I, the reason I did that is let me show you. Let me put the battery in. If I can get it in here, I'm going to put it through this way now. Slide it in there like that. Okay, so now the battery's in, in, and then the wire goes here, and it's going to come through this side. That's okay. The reason I did this was because I was kind of looking for the best place to put the receiver, and I was going to put the receiver kind of down in here, but I would have to wedge it between the tank and this servo. And what I figured out is that if I took that little piece of foam off of my battery tray, I can actually fit my receiver right in here, like that. And what I'll do is I'll wrap it in foam so it's protected. And then what I can do is I can hold it in place by using my Velcro. So the Velcro is going to hold the battery and the receiver in place. So I'm going to go ahead and do that now. And I'm also going to put my switch, electric switch, right here on this side. And that should get everything in there. And the nice thing about doing this is that previously when I had the balancing problem, I had all the weight sort of up in the front here. Well, at least the weight from the battery and then the receiver was up here in the front. And it was all kind of forward of the balancing point. Now I moved it all back to behind the balancing point, and I also added that those weights as we as we saw a little while ago. And I think it's gonna balance out fine now, and I think I'm also gonna be within my weight limit. So let me go ahead and move on now and put the battery, I mean, I'm sorry, put the receiver and then the switch and kind of get things tidied up in here.
Okay, well everything is now installed in the plane. And as you saw, I put in my receiver back down in here. And then I, what I did is I attached the antenna. I have two antenna on here and they're supposed to be at 90 degree angles to each other and as far away as possible. So I put one right here and then there's also one back under here that you saw me do. So those are work pretty good. And they're also supposed to be straight as possible. So I think those are okay. And then of course I packed in the wiring over here, kind of put a Velcro wrap around it to keep it snug and keep it in place. And then of course I installed the switch. And then what I did is, these are my aileron leads. So when I'm setting the, setting the plane up out in the field, these have to plug into the wing leads or the wing wires. And I color coded it with just using some shrink shrink tubing some for, for electronics, as you saw. So I used yellow here. This is for the right aileron for the right for the right wing. So that's all set up now. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and put the wing on and then we'll check the balance again. Should be pretty good. And I'll check the weight and I'll check the wing loading. And then I'm pretty much done with this thing. Okay, the plane is now balanced, I think pretty good. I think I'm maybe just a slightly sort of a tad nose heavy, but I'm okay with that. Um, you can kind of see under here my markings, hopefully. You can see my marking over there where I have my center of balance is that black dot. And then I have the same thing on this side. Hopefully you can kind of see that. Oops, right in back in there. Okay, so the plane is now finished. It's constructed. And the only couple things that I kind of need to do before I take it out for the maiden flight is I need to adjust, you know, I just got to make sure that I dial in my control surfaces, the throws and everything, make sure everything's kind of where I want it for my high and my low settings. I'm just going to do that off camera. I'm just going to kind of fiddle around with those, with those adjustments. And then, of course, like I mentioned before, I'll go over the finish. I'll go over the monocoat one more time to make sure I don't have any wrinkles or bubbles and things like that. But yeah, this thing is pretty much um, ready to go now. So what I'm going to do now, real quick, is I'm going to measure, or I'm going to weigh it, kind of see where it comes in at, and then I'm just going to do a quick little check on the, on the wing loading and see how that compares also. Okay, so now I want to show you the weight. Now, there's no surprises for me because I've already weighed this, and I was doing that when I was putting those additional lead weights in to kind of make this balance. I was really concerned that I was going to go over my weight, so I was very careful, so I was checking it along the way. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to, of course, like I mentioned before, I'm going to use my scale. This is just a luggage, kind of a kind of inexpensive luggage or fishing handheld scale. And it's on pounds right now. And then I just made a little kind of little harness out of some string. And what I'll do is I'll put it on here, kind of in the front like this. And I'll bring it around on this side. Okay, so there's that. Let me kind of put this on top here so I don't lose it. Okay, so there's my little, kind of my little harness. And hopefully you can kind of, you'll be able to see it. Right now it's reading zero, and I don't know if I'm going to have to kind of move my guy up here, but let's try it out. 
you know, pull it up. And there I am at 5.29 pounds. I don't know if you can see that. Right there. Okay. So that's sort of like right in the middle for the specs, which were five and five to five and a half. So I'm really kind of really relieved, kind of happy this turned out this way. So yeah, very, very happy. Okay, let me pull this off of here now. All right, so let me do a quick little calculation for the, the wing loading, and then I'll be finished up with this with this video. So to start with the wing loading, which I'll put up here. is a measure of the total weight of the airplane divided by the area of the wing. And that's expressed in ounces over foot squared. So the wing loading is going to be expressed as ounces over foot squared, like that. So let me go ahead and write down the specs of the kit, and then I'll compare it to like what I came out with. Okay, so the wing area, I'll just put wing, is equal to 500 and 25 inches squared, which is going to be equal to 3.65 feet squared. And then the specs on the weight are going to be the weight of the plane is going to be, or it was supposed to be, 5 to 5.5 five pounds which is going to be equal to 80 to 88 ounces. Okay. And then the wing loading for the kit, I'll just make that, oops, we'll just make that WL. Yuck. Okay, like that. So then our wing loading for the specs is 22 to 24 ounces per foot squared. Okay. I'm going to say here kit specs. All right, so then I'm going to go ahead and put my values right down here. So, of course, my wing area is going to be the same. The weight I came in at so my plane weight came in, I'll put this, I'll just say mine. My weight came in, as I said, at 5.29 pounds, which I already converted, which equals 84.6 ounces. Now that alone, obviously, because of this relationship, because the, the, the area of the wing is constant, because of the fact that my, my weight falls in between the, spec, the, the specified weight, then obviously my wing loading is going to fall in, in there also. But let's just go ahead and calc, calc it out. So again, I'm at 84 ounces is how much the, the plane, 84.6 ounces is how much the plane weighs. So let's go with our 84.6 ounces and we're going to divide that by the area of our wing which is 3.65 feet squared and that comes in at 23.2 ounces per foot squared which again falls right in between the specs for the kit Okay, so I'm really happy about that. You know, when you're building when you're building these planes and you saw me building this thing, if you've been watching this video with me or my videos, you've noticed or you've seen me kind of do a lot of little modifications and yeah, I'm adding stuff to the plane. I, I, I chose to use two, ser two servos for the ailerons, for example. I did some reinforcement. I think the OS46 um, AX2 engine is actually probably beefier than probably the engines that were the same size back in the 1970s. I'm not sure, but you know, something like an OSFP or something like that is probably going to be a, a lighter engine than this. 
So I was kind of doing things along the way that I needed to be careful with, but I was adding weight and I do realize that. And, and I do realize and we do try to keep the weight of the plane as light as possible, but I'm, I'm really happy how it came out. My weight fell into where it needs to be and it balances. So I'm really, really happy with all that. Okay, so join me next time in this build series when I do my test run of the engine. And then after that, I'll do the maiden flight and hopefully that'll be successful. And you know what? Thanks again for subscribing to my channel. Thanks for the comments. Thanks for tagging along with this build. I know it's been quite some time and I really do appreciate it. All right, well, we'll see you next time.